Possible sources of fecal coliform bacteria include, according to our listeners, sewage treatment plants, campsites, local farm runoff, pet waste. Oh, that's an interesting one. Remember that one, kids, because we're going to get to that in a little while. Uh, marine mammals, Canada geese, waterfowl, uh, fish in the estuary, and dead animals. Well, now some of these anim some of these answers uh, could likely be correct. Some of them are a little more difficult. Let's get our oyster over here. I want to uh, ask the oyster if he'd like to make a guess or add to the list of what may be causing the fecal coliform or the source of the fecal coliform bacteria in Padilla Bay. What would you think? I think it's those dinosaurs. You think it's coming from dinosaurs? But yeah. wait a minute. Fecal coliform bacteria come from warm-blooded animals. So, some of these answers that we have might not be possibles, possibilities such as fish in the estuary. Thank you very much for your guest. You're doing a great job. And uh, also the guesses about dead animals well, that could be a source of bacteria, but it couldn't be the source of fecal coliform bacteria because remember, fecal coliform bacteria come from live, they're in the intestines of live warm-blooded animals. Well, now we're going to head back over to our barbecue. After all this talk about fecal coliform, I'd like you to meet Bill Dewey. Bill Dewey is an oyster grower. He's got an oyster farm just uh, about uh, five, six miles on the other side of Samish Island over here. Bill, I sure appreciate your coming. Hey, and Yes, we've worked together before. Absolutely, yeah. We appreciate all your efforts to educate people about shellfish and water quality and you bet. Well, I appreciate your efforts too. I know that uh, water quality is very important to you. And you brought some of the things that you grow at your shellfish farm. Yeah, we Can did. you tell us what you have? Absolutely. We brought along some samples here and kind of explain, explain what we do on our farm. We have, a, we have a hatchery where things start. We bring in adult shellfish to the hatchery and we condition them and we spawn them. What does that mean to spawn to them? To spawn them means uh, you put them in nice tanks of warm seawater with lots of food and they release their sperm and eggs into the water. Fertilization happens externally in the water and then for two or three weeks you got a free swimming baby shellfish in the water. It's called plankton. Oh, so the baby oysters are Baby oysters, are, clams, are mussels. They're plankton for the first two or three weeks of their life. But then they built up enough shell, they're no longer buoyant. They sink to the bottom and they begin their life on the bottom. In the case of okay. an oyster, they glue themselves onto a piece of old oyster shell. So we save our oyster shells from the processing plant. And then we introduce the larvae to a tank with those shells and they glue on. When they first attach, they're microscopic. I don't have a sample of those with, but the, as they grow, Here's some here that are a few months old, and they started out on a very tiny shell Hold chip. Hold that real still in front of the camera like that, Bill. They started out on a real fine microscopic shell chip, and then have grown their own shell, pulling minerals from the water, grown their own shell, and these oysters are probably about two or three months old and ready to be planted out on the bottom. So planted, you mean you take them where? We take them out to our farms, out to our tidelands, and, and put the seed out on the bottom, and then come back a few years later, and hopefully these are some extra large samples here, but these are big Pacific oysters that have grown in Samish Bay. This is actually a cluster, and, and we produce the seed a little bit differently that generates this cluster, but these oysters would come into the processing plant. We would shuck the meats out. Here's one opened up here, so you can see what they look like opened up. You know, you talk about filter feeders and, and the ability of these animals to clean the water out there. A mature Pacific oyster this size in the summertime when the water's warm can filter up to 65 gallons of water a day. 60? Say that again, 65 Bill? gallons of water a day. So you can imagine if you have a whole bed with millions of oysters out there filtering 65 gallons each, they can clean a lot of water. Uh-huh. So then I guess we don't have to keep the water clean. We no, just we, have... Be, you do because if there's contaminants in the water, they'll filter those too and become unsafe. 
oh, then we can't eat them. Right. So one reason to keep the water clean is so that we have clean food to eat. That's right, absolutely. Are there other reasons why we need to keep the water clean? Uh, economic, cultural, uh, any other reasons? Well, it, it, I mean, you want the shellfish to be healthy and living out there because they're an important part of the ecosystem. You can see from these oysters, there's a lot of things that depend on these oysters for substrate to live on and grow on. So if the water was polluted and you didn't have oysters, where would these other critters live and survive? They need that for habitat. So from an ecological standpoint, they're important. And that filtering we talked about, that's an important part of the ecosystem. Culturally, it's important too. I mean, there's a, there's a, a long heritage that goes back to Native Americans harvesting shellfish. You know, it's, this has been an important food for people in the Pacific Northwest forever. I see. Well, I'm starting to get a little bit hungry. Bill, uh, we see that we've got some oysters on, got the, some grill oysters on the grill over here. Where did these oysters come from? These came, came from our farm this morning. When I, when I came over this morning, I grabbed some oysters. and. Oh, so these are not the oysters right here from Padilla Bay no, where the fecal no, coliform you, are. You saw the sign earlier on in the program here. These aren't safe out here because of the fecal coliform. So but these it, came from Samish Bay to the north where the waters are clean and it's safe. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Now, uh, Bill, you, you mentioned that we need to keep the water clean, but I'm wondering what are some of the things that school kids could do to help keep the water clean? That's a great question, Alex. So, some of the things that I can think of right at the top is when, you know, when they're out walking their pets and, and the pets do their, do their deed, is to pick up after their pets. You know, cleaning up pet waste is important because those pet waste wash into the storm drains and those storm drains lead to the bay and will contaminate the shellfish beds. I see. Another thing is to think wait, about... Wait, wait, oh, Bill. Go ahead. Yeah. Look right over here. We've got uh -oh. a, a pet. And, yep, there's a, there's a dog right over here. And uh, it looks like it's even uh, doing some business right now. Um, so we have some kids here. And maybe there's a, a job that they can do to help, you say. Um, this is uh, not an easy job that you've been given here. And I suppose there are some listeners on the, uh, uh, in the program here that have probably never done this before. Cody, have you ever done this job before? Yes. Okay, so you know what you're up against. The first time, was it pretty hard? Yes. So, kids, we're asking you to help out here, but this is not an easy job. Sometimes taking care of the estuary can be a difficult thing. But, Cody, show us how easy it really can be. There goes the pet waste. Picking it up with the plastic bag, turn the bag inside out. Now, uh, Cody, do you have a pet at home? Yes. What is it? Um, a la yellow, yellow lab and a springer. Okay, so when you pick up the pet waste, what do you do with it? We pick it up and throw it in the garbage can. Oh, okay, like put it in the garbage, garbage can. can. Yeah. That's an excellent thing. Cody, we've got a garbage can right up there by the road. Why don't you head right up there with it? Thank you very much. Students, there you see, it's not always easy. Now, let's see. The next thing is, all this talk about oysters, another thing that we can do is to uh, taste the oysters. See if, uh, see if they're really any good. Cody and Steven, why don't you take one of those and uh, we'll see what you think. I've never eaten an oyster before. Never eaten one before? Oh, well, well, you'll I'll have to... Apparently I'm not going to eat one. I'll take another one. Cody? What do you think? Oysters good? Pretty good. Yeah, they're, my, they're one of my favorites too. Steven, your first oyster. It's okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's the texture like? Slimy. Oh, well, I would expect that. 